So I'll start with the very simple introduction as a name suggests, you know, the diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. Simply alveolar hemorrhage means something is there in alveoli, the bleeding in the alveoli. So what happens in a diffuse alveolar hemorrhage? There is a bleeding that is in the alveoli in the acinar portion of the lung. And this, the patient will not say that I'm bleeding in the lung, you know, this is the problem. And that is why this, this DAH is actually a very significant therapeutic challenge for everyone. Because the presentation symptoms are similar to any other respiratory diseases. This may cause by various kinds of immunological or non-immunological diseases, but we need to identify because the treatment actually differs what is the etiology of the DAH. And very important point, despite of a diagnosis, the mortality in this DAH is very high. And this mortality actually increases if we delay in a diagnosis. The mortality even can go up to 50% if we delay in the diagnosis. That is why the prompt identification and diagnosis, as well as the underlying cause of the DAH to identify is very important as far as the DAH part is concerned. We will just focus on, you know, start with the clinical presentation, how these patients present to us. So any patients of the DAH comes with the simple hemopsis, hypoxemic respiratory failure, and the dropen hemoglobin. We can remember it as a synonyms. A DAH stands for D for dyspnea, A for anemia, and H for hemopsis. So the patient will present with the breathing difficulty, will have a drop in hemoglobin, and hemopsis is a complaint. But at the same time, we need to remember that this hemopsis is not like the patient will have the hemopsis every patient. No. These patients, only up to 60 to 70% of patients may present with hemopsis. 30 to 40 percent, up to one third of a patient may may not show any symptoms of a blood in sputum or hemopsis. Alveolar infiltration, it's definitely a very important, uh, you know, the presentation. The patient will present with the dyspnea, breathing difficulty. X-ray will show bilateral infiltration, but in very rarely it may be unilateral also. And the drop in hemoglobin, as I told you, we cannot comment because it depends also like on which day of presentation patient presented to the emergency. It was a day one or a day three or a day five, but uh, mostly, mostly these patients presents with the drop in hemoglobin also. Along with these uh, typical symptoms, that is a dyspnea, anemia, and hemopsis, the patient may also have mild cough, chest pain, fever, or some underlying symptoms. The causes of a DAH is mostly related to immunological, or collagen vascular diseases like the Wegner's, micropan, good posture syndrome, antiphospholipid syndrome. It may also associate it with the infectious disease, any kind of infections. Even, you know, uh, the simple viral infection can present with the DEH. The surprising thing is we recently encountered with the few patients with the dengue also presented with the DEH. So uh, this, this, this is a very important, you know, the a diagnosis to make because if we start treatment early, these patients respond wonderfully. And uh, at the same time, the, the, the prognosis uh, reverse. The neoplastic condition is also sometimes may associated with the DAH. Uh, this is a diagnostic approach uh, that uh, I'll, I'll discuss this graph later um, you know, when I'll complete this diagnostic approach to these uh, DAH patients.